this lesson is on types of sources um, and this lesson serves to provide you with an overview of the different types of sources that are found within a library. So the library plays host to many different types of sources um, and for purposes of today we're going to kind of divide them into different categories and look at these different categories. Um, and we do this because understanding what the different types of sources are can really help you to make an informed decision on determining what sources you might need. Um, so essentially determining the best source for your use. The four divisions that we're going to look at are print and non-print, current and retrospective, primary and secondary, and scholarly and non-scholarly. And we're going to look at each of these four divisions in a bit more detail. The first division is print and non-print sources. Print sources examples include periodicals, so journals, magazines, newspapers. Uh, this also includes your print reference, um, so the large reference books, your print encyclopedias um, that are found within libraries, as well as your circulating books, so the books that are found in the stacks that can actually be checked out. Uh, Non-print sources include databases, so things you might find through AVL or Alabama Virtual Library. Um, web sources, things you might find on the internet. Um, Ebooks, and also audiovisuals, so CDs, DVDs, posters. Um, these types of things are usually considered uh, non-print as well. Many of the sources uh, that we're going to talk about today, um, we're going to talk about throughout the semester a bit more in depth, including where to find them and how to effectively use them. Um, and as we kind of go along, I want you to think about what are the benefits of each of the two types of sources um, in the division. So for this one, what are the advantages or benefits of non-print sources? Um, and what are the advantages and benefits of print sources? Uh, the second division that we're going to look at is current and retrospective. Uh, current sources are newer sources, uh, meaning they've been created, published, or updated recently. Um, recently can depend on what field or discipline you're in, but as a general rule, three to five years is usually considered fairly recent. Uh, retrospective or historical sources, as they're sometimes called, are your older sources, uh, and they've not been published or updated recently. And again, what's considered historical or retrospective can vary depending on the field, uh, because some areas of research, science, technology, medicine, really call for the use of extremely current sources, and why might that be? Science, technology, and medicine are all three fields that are constantly changing, um, and so the need for current information is really critical in making sure that the research stays correct. Um, you also have to, when using retrospective sources, you have to consider the time, the place, and the culture that produced it um, because cultural and societal changes affect scholarship. A lot of the things that were written in the civil, during the Civil Rights Movement um, are definitely going to be looked at differently than if they were written about today. Okay, because the culture in which the time and place in which all of that was taking place was different than it is now, so you have to keep that in mind as well. Your next division is primary and secondary. Uh, primary is a first-hand account of an event um, or something that was generated by the event. Um, and a lot of times you can use primary sources for facts um, like data. Examples, diaries, letters, and journals. Photographs, original research, um, original literary or theatrical works. Uh, video or audio recordings and newspaper or magazine articles from the time period. Uh, secondary articles, um, secondary sources are secondhand accounts, um, interpretation of or based on primary sources, um, and are often used for theory analysis and interpretation. Examples include scholarly books and articles, uh, conference proceedings, or documentaries. And our fourth and last division is scholarly versus non-scholarly. Um, so what makes a source scholarly? You might hear your professor, you might hear your instructor say that you need a scholarly article or you need a scholarly source. What does that mean? Um, a source is scholarly when it's written by a scholar. Um, these sources are usually intended for an academic audience where it's uh, other people in the field or professors in the field or even students in the field. It's intended um, for an academic audience. 
Uh, scholarly sources use specific and detailed language um, and information about a topic or area, so you really have to have some type of prior knowledge to understand fully what's being said. Um, and then most importantly, scholarly sources are peer review. Um, and as a result, many scholarly sources are referred to as peer-reviewed sources or peer-reviewed journals. I mean, this is simply, simply a process by which the articles in the scholarly sources are inspected, usually by two or more experts within the field. Um, they check facts, methodology, reasoning, quality of writing, um, and just simply making sure that um, the work is correct, is accurate. Um, does this mean that all non-scholarly sources are bad? Not at all. Non-scholarly does not equal unreliable. And we're going to learn more about the evaluation of sources later this semester um, because a lot of times non-scholarly sources do require that evaluation uh, to determine which ones are bad and which ones are good, uh, but they're not all, all bad or unreliable. Um, some examples of useful non-scholarly sources, newspapers, news magazines, trade journals, reputable magazines like National Geographic, um, etc.